guests on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip, and CJ still adjusting his mic. This is going to be the new opening. He's well. He's lost his. He's lost his his mic. He's in the bomb shelter, but uh, we'll get him on shortly. I know he's got a lot to say. Well, we had a guest schedule. I'll start off. We did have a guest scheduled. Uh, Attorney Dave David Dennis, candidate for mayor, um, he did call last night and apologize. He said he had court today. Um, he normally doesn't have uh, tr uh, cases on Friday. He said, but this one was uh, it, this one ca got moved, and uh, if he can if he can get here, he will show up. But he's going to reschedule. So that was our our guest. So I guess we're going to have to. I don't know if we can find anything to talk about in the city of Fall River. Uh, you're a little muffled, CJ. I think you got your mic, but you're a little, little muffled. CJ, your mic is still kind of low. Should be better now. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now we can start. All now right. Now we can start this. I said uh, I don't think we have anything to talk about at all because I think that uh, there's just nothing left that's going on at Fall River. Um, you know, the ballot just recently became available for the recall, though, and of course the mayor is at the top of the ballot where he thinks he should be, and uh, a lot of people are not um, happy about it, but the ballot is now at least available to be seen. Um, I'm having a big problem with this whole thing because everything that you come out against now, it's all of a sudden the recall is, again, the recall is, the recall is, the recall is. You know what, just because somebody signed a recall petition doesn't mean that they're the recallers, all right? And, you know, Faust Fiori has, has, has said this over and over and over again. And um, yesterday, uh, from a very, very reliable source, um, I personally have been uh, called out at WSAR. I'm not allowed on the air. I'm not allowed um, to, in any way, shape, or form, have my name mentioned on the air. And I thought that was kind of funny because you know, I, when I do call, they give me moments and then they cut me off. But now I guess I'm, you know, totally persona non grata, which I don't care. Uh, but the information that came out from this reliable source was unbelievable on what they're trying to do, um, how they're trying to do it, why they're trying to do it, why they're uh, directing what can be said by the hosts, what cannot be said by the host, um, and how you have to focus on specific candidates. And I have a problem with that. You know, the radio waves are owned by the public. They're not owned by WSAR. They're owned by the public. That's why the federal government gets involved and issues a license. And you're given wide latitude on what you can put on the air, okay? But part of that license says you must serve the public interest. And currently, people don't feel like the public interest is being served they feel like the propaganda machine has keyed, keyed up and running. But I also found it very interesting that this happened when we spoke on our show specifically about the fact that the Amazon deal requires a private developer who has not been named, and that developer is going to be obtaining this land, I'm quite sure, at far less than the $5.3 million valuation that was assessed by the city. So. The question then becomes, when that developer is identified and we find out exactly how much that developer paid for this land, we'll see how much of a deal is given and we'll know where every politician sets with this deal and what's going on. Nobody, and I want to say again, nobody has ever said, we are against jobs. 
or I am against jobs, or you are against jobs, or anyone is against jobs. We want the jobs. We just demand transparency and accountability, something that Fall River has never given us, and still, to this day, still is not giving us. And you have to look at this and say, why is it such a big deal to you know, WSAR? It's very questionable. But this recall that just started is, it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes. It really is, Chip. No, you're, yeah, you're right, CJ. Um, and obviously, well, let me begin with the recall statement. Uh, you know, let me let me say for the record that uh, recaller is not a it's not an expletive. Uh, it's not a it's not a swear. Uh, it has been used in a disparaging way uh, by people who oppose the recall. But what they forget is that recallers are are in fact voters. If they if they were part of the petition. It means they're a registered voter, which means they are participating uh, in, in the governmental process, and they have every right in this country uh, to participate in the, in the process. Uh, because they have a different position doesn't make, it, doesn't make, doesn't, uh, make them uh, something that is to be vilified. Uh, unfortunately, that's what politics has descended into in this country. It, you know, it's a mudslinging contest. I've said time and time again, this is a referendum on the mayor's uh, performance. We, you know, you can have whatever opinion you like. We can begin with the, we can begin with the history lesson, the illegal uh, stormwater tax, the, uh, the window gate, uh, the uh, shower gate, glass door gate, um, uh, Coogan gate. Uh, we have an entire uh, an entire mini series devoted on on one of the Facebook pages to Flanagan shenanigans. So if every if if you happen to be one of the people who's fine with that, okay. But uh, you know we are, you know we're not going to call you anti recallers like it's some call, some type of uh, derogatory term. Look, you take your, you take your position. The fact is that the recall is is an exercise in, in government. The law stipulates very clearly that there's a recall process. It's not a very good one, I'll add. Uh, if we learned one thing from this process, it's that the recall uh, act for Fall River has to be changed. They can't have these gray areas. We can't have these areas where you get an incumbent who's really not an incumbent because if you read the statute, it says he serves as mayor until he's recalled. Then he gets it. He's the incumbent uh, on some technicality uh, because he serves until it's certified and they're going to sit on the certification for 10 days, you know, and, and th this kind of thing. You know, we have to clean up this act. But I want to tell everybody out there, even the recallers, our, our fellow recallers, stop complaining about where his position is on the ballot. Stop complaining about the, th about the, you know, the legal decision that uh, he can run and go to the polls and vote. We've accomplished our mission. As recallers, we wanted to get a recall. We have. On December 16th, there will be an election, and there will be a recall. Well, Chip, uh, we had some technical difficulties. Um, oh. For some reason, we weren't brought, being broadcast live. We just went on the air a few moments ago live, so we can bring back our people so they can kind of have an understanding where they all, are. All that amazing <laughs> dialogue that, that, and the diatribe and the dialogue for nothing. Oh. But this will be replayed today on YouTube, and I'll see if we can get this replayed on uh, FRC Media on Channel 95 a little later on today. Uh, but we are on live and our viewers can now watch us. Um, it's just very interesting to see how this is just going crazy, crazy, crazy over and over again. And when did it ever become illegal? When did it ever become a negative thing to ask your city government, to ask the people that you elected to represent you to explain to you why, how, what, and the whys, and the wherefores, and everything else on anything they do. I mean, just look at what happened at the city council meeting on Tuesday, okay? You had a neighborhood president make an outright threat to everyone in that chamber when they said, anyone who speaks anything bad about Chief Rachel Seen, 
I will have to be arrested. That's an outright threat. She, that neighborhood president wasn't arrested. But if one of the people who are very vocal about asking questions starts asking questions, it, they get the pound on the table and they're told, shut up and get out. They clear, they clear the room. And this shows the difference in this city council. Personally, I have lost faith in all nine of them. All nine. And I think that Councilor Mayoza, of all people, when he took the vote to increase the resident tax rate and decrease the commercial tax rate, said to the people of Fall River very clearly, this is what I have to do. This is the same old, same hole that we're always getting. So how can we say that we're getting anything better from this city council? The, all nine of these people have to go. And the problem is, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry viewers, I'm sorry people of Fall River, but I firmly believe you don't know the situation and you cannot understand politics. I firmly believe you go into that voting booth and you say, oh, she's a nice girl. Oh, he's a nice guy. He gave me a chow mein sandwich. He gave me a chicken pot pie dinner. And that's how you vote. Well, if your vote can be bought that cheap, it's no wonder the city of Fall River sells us like we're dirt cheap like we're nothing but slave labor, because they think that everything comes to us. And Chip, you say all the time, when are you going to learn that if the community has no money, you can support the businesses all you want? The business is not gonna get any support because the co community has no money. So when you raise the taxes, you take more money away, away from business when you put it on the, the residents. So you give them back that in a tax break, but you're not getting anything in the form of business. Well, you're right, CJ, and and we'll get we'll get back to you know I guess we were it'll it'll be replayed what I said about the recall. Listen, uh, we wanted a recall, we got a recall. December 16th, we will have that election, and as I said earlier, but it wasn't on. Uh, apparently, it wasn't live. Uh, so let's just. We, we can be not happy with the fact that the mayor's number one on the bottom half of the ballot, that he's even allowed to run in the first place. But the fact is, what we wanted to do is get a recall, and we did. And now it's up, the burden is no longer on us. Only a partial of burden. We, we did the heavy lifting to get a recall. Now it's up to the people of Fall River to stand up and prove that our effort was not in vain, that they, are, they have been paying attention, and all this outrage and all, this, all, all these uh, opinions we've been hearing are not just words, because words without deeds are worthless weeds, as one man once said. And, and the fact is that on December 16th, there's another referendum. There's two referendums. There's a referendum on the mayor, and there's a referendum on the people of Fall River. Both because, of which I'm tired of hearing about. <laughs> because if they don't come out and vote Willie out, they get what they deserve. I feel, I feel that the people who worked and worked very hard on the recall, and some of them are frustrated, and I'm frustrated too, we have to change that law. But we need to put people in office, not only in the mayor's office, as you just talked about the city council, who will at least represent the people. We ask questions, we talk. I mean, look, uh, I didn't say we shouldn't have Amazon. I've said that we need any kind of job we, we, we can get in the city. It's obvious. We're second in the state in unemployment. So, but that doesn't mean that I can't say, gee, why didn't we get a better deal? Why, why, wasn't there, why wasn't there some guarantees in that TIF? I mean, that's, that's not being negative. That's just, that's just being pragmatic and say, if we're going to give them all these breaks, why don't we get a little bit more? We gave away the store, and we got nothing back. And that segues me into the city council actions lately. You know, I, I, you know CJ, CJ's diatribe, you can see he's a little upset uh, about the councilors, <laughs> as... As am I. Um, look, I don't, I don't have a problem with them voting for, for Amazon. What I do have a problem with is every single one of them uh, participating in a two-minute and 11-second meeting where nobody says anything, and then they run out like their pants are on fire and say, 
well, uh, we have to vote for jobs. We have to vote for jobs. Well, you can vote for jobs, but you can ask questions. You can say that you're voting for jobs under duress, that you think that TIF could have been done better. There could have been more guarantees for the people that you represent, the citizens and workers of Fall River. And it's not the first time. That's the excuse you always use. I can't vote against it because it's jobs. I can't vote against it because it's the 11th hour and the water department will, will blow up. That's bull you know what, because it's just an excuse. Have some courage. You don't have to oppose everything. Although we did at one time before some of these people were around, we had a councilor who voted no virtually 99% of the time, and he stayed in the council for well over 20 years. And you remember in CJ, Jack John Medeiros. Yep. No, no, Nanette, he used to be called. But you know, Chip. But, you know, so it's possible to actually have a different difference of opinion. And, and John Medeiros basically voted no on 98% of the issues that came before the council. I, you know, I, I, and I respected John for that. I really did, and so did a lot of other people. But the problem is, this council seems to be now, now that the recall has gone through, now that this election's coming up, now they don't feel that they're in the spotlight anymore. They think it's over and done with, okay? And when you start getting counselors that start getting so secure in their seats because they're going to vote me in anyways. I've been here for X number of years. I'm not going to be voted out. I've been here for X number of years. I'm not going to be voted out. I can be the yes woman for any mayor that's in town because I'm the pet rock, and I can do that, okay? But that's not what Fall River needs. Fall River needs an aggressive city council, a very aggressive city council, a city council that's going to stand up to people that do nothing except line their own pockets. And, you know, you look at these agencies like the RDA and the FROED, you know, the economic destruction, and they're making money hand over fist on the taxpayers of Fall River, but they're not producing anything. They're not producing anything. So how does that work? And, you know, through this whole candidatorial process, this campaign that's now coming up, I'm getting very frustrated because no matter which candidate I go to, no matter which one I look at their information, I'm getting the same bullet points that we received last year, two years before that, and the first run of this mayor. And you know what? Those bullet points mean nothing to me. And you've got candidates that are saying, I, you know, I can't give you a plan because it might change when I walk into the, the office on day one. And again, that's, those are the things we're looking at. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a, a premonition. Uh, <laughs> uh, something I think will probably happen. Uh, Massachusetts J uh, state law allows for 10 days for an election to be certified. That's the maximum amount of time that the election can take to be certified. Now, if we know that election can be certified in one or two days, that's fine. But they'll, I'll guarantee you that the mayor if he is recalled and he does not get reelected, will turn around and advise Elizabeth Camara of the Elections Commission to delay the certification of that vote for the full 10 days, which will put that till the 26th of December. So whoever the new mayor is will take office on the 26th of December. Now, I know from several reputable people in City Hall that they have already been told that if they get recalled, that they will be fired before he steps out of office. Because remember, once he is recalled and a new person is elected, they cannot take office until they are qualified, which means the election must be certified and they must be sworn into office. I have this on very, from very reliable employees at Government Center that have contacted us either through email or through phone conversation and said very clearly that their jobs are being threatened. And we knew this was happening all through the recall process too. And that's why people we had approached to sign the recall petitions said very clearly, I can't because I'll lose my job. I can't because my husband will lose his job. I can't because my mother will lose her job. And you know, that people are walking around 
not on eggshells, but on the tips of razors at City Hall. And they are so afraid that they're going to slip and get their neck cut is, is all in and of itself a very scary situation. And I don't think I could work in an environment like, like that. And personally, I think that those people should go forward and get an attorney and file a hostile work environment suit because it shouldn't be happening. And their union representatives, if they are part of the union, should be filing complaints about that because that is not acceptable. And if they're not union members, they probably need to go anyhow. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, obviously we know that this, this, this administration has, has been accused of attempted intimidation uh, of a counselor, and also uh, they have a pretty good record of, of, of having, uh, firing people unilaterally who don't agree. So yeah, people are intimidated, but let me, let me get back to the, to the major issue here. Uh, all these things can go away on December 16th, people if you get out and vote. See, this is the whole thing. You know, we, we sit here and we talk a lot about how, how screwed up government is, and we talk about how screwed up some of these counselors are and how, how screwed up our mayor is. But let's place the blame squarely where it belongs on the people of Fall River for not voting. We can't have 12%, 17% turnouts. You know, I mean, I vote in, and I guess they tried to, to, to crucify some people on um, Facebook, and they said I, I voted more than 50% of the time. I would say I vote more than, I vote 100% of the time in, in final elections. There have been some primary elections because I am an independent voter. I am neither Republican nor Democrat. That I forego, I have uh, uh, foregone uh, some of the primary elections during my voting life because there's just nobody in the, in, you know, in the field, in the primary that I'm really that interested in. And uh, I'm looking at the final elections. I have voted both in Republican and Democratic primaries when there was a particular candidate who I felt uh, deserved to, to get into the final election. Um, so it's about voting. There's an old quote from, from Theodore Roosevelt about why, one, the, why Rome uh, was destroyed. And it wasn't because of the Roman circus, which is now, I think, transferred over the, the government center. <laughs> uh, but the fact is, uh, I'm paraphrasing it, but basically he said the, you know, Rome began, began to lose its power when the, when the Roman electorate failed to exercise its rights to vote. They became too lazy, uh, too apathetic, and they used every excuse in the world not to participate in government. And when, th when that happens, the lunatics run the asylum. Well, the lunatics are obviously running the asylum now. And, you know, the big problem I have with that is I have heard every excuse from every person in Fall River who didn't get out and go out to vote. Oh, I had to work. Oh, I wasn't in town. Oh, you know, I was sick. My mother's sick. I got to take care of her. My father's sick. I'm sick. This one's sick. That one's sick. You know what? Call down to the uh, Board of Elections, 508-324-2630, and ask them to mail you an absentee ballot application. Mail that application back immediately, and they will mail you a ballot. Once you get the ballot, check it off, put it in the envelope, and mail it back. Because unlike other states, Massachusetts does not allow for late ballot counts. So if it is not in City Hall by 8 p.m. on Election Day, it's not counted. So get off your backside, pick up your phone, and make the phone call and get your absentee ballot. Or otherwise, pick your butt off, up off the, the couch and go out to the poll and vote. Okay? Don't worry about missing five minutes of, uh, you know, some program on TV, or you might miss the 5 o'clock newscast, so you'll have to watch it at 6, and you don't want to do that because at 6 you're watching the channel. You know what? Get up and vote. Because if there's a 17% turnout, and we've already looked at the numbers, and we really have looked at them very, very closely, and the people of Fall River don't seem to want to believe it, we have right now three major candidates that are polling at the top. Uh, Sam Sutter... Mike Mayoza and Sean Kadim. When we look at Sam Sutter and Sean Kadim, we look at approximately 26% going to Sutter, 
24% going to Kadeem. About 27% are saying they're for the mayor. And the balance of the people are undecided or other, which means they didn't even come in at a high enough percentage rate to give them a, a part of the pie. Um, and we've looked at this and we've compared it to another poll and I know the candidates are doing their own polls and they'll find that probably the numbers are pretty much collective. I think now it's time for the candidates, and I'm calling on every candidate, and I'm telling you now, every candidate, to get together and have a discussion in your opposition to William Flanagan and say, who has the opportunity to take this election? Because if you truly have the opportunity to take this election, if you are truly going to come up with the best deal for Fall River, if you're going to come up with the best plan, then you should be supported. And to rule out any questions of miscarriage, of any questions that, you know, the, the plurality re-elected a nitwit, then you should really turn around and say, what can we do? Because if you're just running for your ego, put your ego behind you. Okay? Right now, this election is about the future of Fall River, not the lies that keep coming out. It's about the future of Fall River. So, seriously, candidates, get together, go have a drink somewhere, you know, go to the TA, go to, you know, the Assortiana, go wherever you want. Go to the Academica Club, go to, you know, Bella's, go somewhere, you know, stop at the neighborhood bar, have a drink, and talk about it. And if you're really serious about this, then you should move forward. But you need to make sure you have the ability to win this election. I don't know, Chip. I guess I'm over. I'm, I'm just. Yeah, you're, you're, just, you're dreaming. Yeah, you're dreaming. That's not happening. Well, well you know. You know, I, I, I mean, in a perfect aid. world, it would happen. In a perfect world, he wouldn't be on the top of the ballot. In a perfect world, he wouldn't be able to run. And with that, I'm going to say thank you to everybody who participated in the recall. The ward captains who worked so hard. Uh, everybody that was involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the recall, every single person who signed that recall petition. We will review those recall petitions and see how many of you actually voted on December 16th, and we will report that on this show just to see if we, we followed through. Uh, congratulations on your victory. We do have a recall. Job isn't done. If every single one of those 5,500 plus people who sign that petition vote, we've done our job. If he wins and he's a minority mayor, well, the system is flawed. We can't be faulted for this mess. Again, politicians made this law and they screwed it up again. But the fact is, we accomplished what we had to do. Call every, every single recall, 5,500 of you, Call five people you know and make sure they go in to number one, recall Flanagan. And that's the other thing I've got to call the candidates out on. I have seen flyers from virtually all the top candidates. I have not seen one of them that highlights the fact that first we have to recall the mayor before there is an election. They all tell you why they want to be mayor and they've forgotten the fact that he has to be recalled first. So let's, number one, recall him, and let's make sure he gets out. Select the candidate you feel will lead the city forward. And if he wins 27 to 26, I want to see him get up with his famous and say, I got 26% <laughs> of the vote. You know, because he's always crowed about him being a, 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 the mandated mayor because he got 70% of the vote. Well, now it showed how bad you are. You'll take 26% just so you can stay in that corner office. And it doesn't matter. If you stay in there, you're still a dud. <laughs> Thanks for watching Spindle City Straight Talk, and we'll see you next week. There'll only be one show next week. It's Thanksgiving week, so see you then.